You're listening to the Patenting for Inventors podcast with registered patent attorney, Dr. Adam Diamond, founder of Diamond Patent Law, the number one source for securing your intellectual property needs. Now, here's your host, Adam Diamond. Hello and welcome to the Patenting for Inventors podcast, episode 19, how to write the abstract of the invention section of your patent application. My name is Dr. Adam Diamond a registered patent attorney and founder and owner of Diamond Patent Law in Los Angeles, California. I can be contacted through my website at patentingforinventors.com. That's patentingforinventors.com. Or you can call me at 424-281-0162. And while most attorneys can only practice in states where they are members of that state's bar, patent attorneys are actually allowed to practice patent law in any state. So feel free to contact me regardless of where you live. So far in drafting the application, we've covered the claims, the drawings, the detailed description of the embodiments, the brief description of the drawings, the background of the invention, and the brief summary of the the invention. In this episode, I'm going to go over the last major section of the patent application that most inventors will have to initially deal with when they're writing up an application. There are some other sections that are only required in specific circumstances, and I'm going to go over those special circumstances in the next two episodes, but for most of you, the abstract of the invention is going to be the last section you have to deal with. So what is the abstract of the invention? An abstract is another kind of summary of the invention. We talked about how to write the summary of the invention in the last episode, and depending on how you wrote your summary, it might be very similar to what you've already written, but it's usually going to be even a little bit more simplified. The abstract of the invention is what shows up on the front sheet or cover page of your patent when it publishes. And when I first read a patent and I'm trying to figure out the big picture of the invention, the abstract is the first thing I read. If you look at the federal regulations on what the abstract is, it says, The abstract must be as concise as the disclosure permits, preferably not exceeding 150 words in length. The purpose of the abstract is to enable the patent office and the general public to determine quickly from a cursory inspection the nature and the gist of the technical disclosure. So it's supposed to be 150 words or less. Usually that's around 6 to 12 sentences. So there's not much to it. Let's look at an example. There's a picture hanging system and the patent number is 6119999 and you can find it with the Google patent search. I'll read you the entire abstract because it's not too long. A picture hanging system comprising a rod from which one or more pictures are suspended by a pair of wire cables. In the preferred embodiment, the cables are each suspended from a link comprising turnbuckle or the like having a nut affixed to a bolt so that the picture may be leveled merely by rotating the nut relative to the bolt or vice versa to reduce or increase the spacing between the rod and each side of the picture. That's just 80 words, so if the inventor wanted to write a little bit more, he could have. But this is fine. You can see that this type of description is really meant for the layperson. It doesn't really sound like legal speak at all, but he does use the word comprising. He says it's a picture hanging system. He said there's a rod where one or more pictures are suspended by cables. He then describes how the cables are suspended from a link and describes the link as having a nut and a bolt. And he says the purpose is that the picture can be leveled by rotating the nut relative to the bolt. Now, I'm not saying you understand the entire invention or what exactly he got a patent for when you read this, but you get a basic idea of some of the main features of his invention and what the invention is useful for. Maybe the only technical thing you haven't heard of is a turnbuckle, so you might have to look up what that is, but that's probably the most technical thing there is in the abstract, and it's something he probably had to include in the abstract because it's key to his invention. It used to be there was a hard requirement that the abstracts couldn't be more than 150 words, but in 2013, the wording of the regulation changed, so now it says preferably not exceeding 150 words in length, so maybe there's a little bit of flexibility compared to before, but it's still good practice to keep it under 150 words because other countries might not be as flexible, so if you're going to file the same application in other countries, it's good to keep it below 150 words to keep everything consistent. The manual patent examining procedure gives guidelines on how it should be written. The general public, as well as the patent office, should be able to quickly read it and get the nature and gist of the invention. The abstract should mention what is new about your invention and not be so general that someone wouldn't have any idea of what these novel features are. And talk about the improvements, but you shouldn't compare the invention with prior art. So this might seem like a paradox. You're supposed to talk about improvements and what is new, but not mention the prior art or things in the past. What this means is, Write about what your invention does, but don't specifically mention that other things in the past can't do your things. In the avocado slicer patent I've talked about before, let's say previous avocado slicers couldn't take pits out of various sizes. Don't say, Smith's patent is very similar, 
but it can't take out pits of different sizes, but this invention can. That's the type of direct comparison that shouldn't be in the abstract. But what you could say is, this avocado slicer has an improved pit engagement member that allows it to be able to remove avocado pits of various sizes. So you're not comparing it to anything in specific, but when the reader reads the abstract, they'll understand that at least one part of the invention has to do with the pit removing part of the device and that it can remove pits of various sizes. Some other guidance from the patent office is that the abstract should be at least 50 words and less than 15 lines of text. You should avoid legal language such as said and means. You should cut out phrases that are implied. Examples are, this disclosure concerns, or the disclosure defined by this invention is. You don't need to write that stuff. It just takes up word space that's unnecessary. Just get to the meat of what your invention is about. That's about it for the abstract. It's really short and just gives the gist of your invention that a lay person should be able to read and understand what your invention's about. In the next episode, I'm going to go over a section that you might not need, but you definitely need to know about, especially if you're going to be filing more than one application, and it's called the cross-reference to related applications. If you want help with drafting your patent application, you can contact me through my website at patentingforinventors.com, that's patentingforinventors.com, or call Diamond Patent Law at 424-281-0162. I'm Adam Diamond, and until next time, keep on inventing. Thanks for listening to the Patenting for Inventors podcast with host Adam Diamond. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review on iTunes. The contents of this podcast are intended for general informational purposes only. The facts of every legal matter are unique, and the content of this podcast should not be construed as offering legal advice for your specific legal situation. For more information and help with your own intellectual property needs, contact Adam Diamond at patentingforinventors.com. That's patentingforinventors.com or call Diamond Patent Law at 424-281-0162. The preceding information may be considered an attorney advertisement and does not establish any attorney-client relationship.